All right, this survey that you're going to complete gives you an opportunity to look at all the stages of the scientific method. We're talking about hypotheses and data collection and data analysis. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do is you need to write a unique survey question. That means that nobody else in the class is going to be working with a similar subject. What makes it a what makes it a good survey question? Excellent. I'm so glad you asked. First of all, it needs to be specific, which means you're going to give them, the people who are responding, five possible choices to answer your question with. So here's my example question, which you can't use now because I've used it as an example. Which is your favorite flavor of Jello? Lime, orange, cherry, raspberry, or grape? Now it's very possible that the people who are responding don't like any of those favorite or any of those five as their favorite, but they're going to choose one of those five. Please notice that none of those options are I don't know or other. You need to make sure that all five of those are a specific flavor in my case. A non-specific question would be what kind of jello do you like? There are like 13 or 15 different flavors of jello. So this is going to give you a lot of information that you may not be able to analyze in a way that helps you out. So we limit it down to five, but we give very specific options. Another potential question that would be difficult for somebody to answer would be, what is your favorite type of horse? First of all, there's lots of different kinds of horses. And the other problem with that is that not everybody knows about horses or BMX bikes or superhero transformer guys. So you want to make sure you choose something that everybody has some kind of experience with. For instance, days of the week or holidays. I'm not going to say anything more than that because I don't want to take away all the awesome, possible, excellent choices. But you want to pick one subject that you can ask five possible options on. For instance, seasons of the year, not a good one. There's only four. You want to make sure that what you're picking, you can think of five possible answers and that it's going to be something that's going to be answerable by everybody. All right. When you do that, I'm going to have a list. And you want to make sure you check that list before you commit to that question. And add your subject to that list so that you can claim that subject all for your own. Everyone is going to write a unique question. All right. Get to it. So now you have your question. You want to write your hypothesis. This is the result you think you're going to get based on who you're going to survey in class. So the first thing you want to write down is what you think your result is going to be. You can talk about overall class preferences. For instance, if you survey 20 different people, you think that a certain number or a certain percentage are going to have a preference for one flavor of jello in my example or whatever your example is or maybe you're going to think that guys are going to prefer one flavor of jello and girls are going to prefer another so you want to pick what your answer is going to be based on classes uh, the whole class as a group or boys versus girls and you want to be specific you want to tell us either with a total number like eight out of 20 are going to prefer this or percentages over 50 percent or 75%, which would be three quarters of the class. In my example, then, of a specific hypothesis, I say that I think 60% of this class is going to prefer raspberry jello. Go ahead and write your hypothesis now. Now that you have your question and your hypothesis, you are ready to collect data. Now, normally, I would have the class all talk to each other, but not everybody's going to be doing this at the same time. So, what you're going to do is I have a cup with a whole bunch of uh, names in it. You're going to take each of your five options. In my case, I had five flavors of Jello. You have five other answer options. You're going to number them one through five. For every time you roll a name or draw a name out of the cup, you're going to roll a dice. Whatever number comes up, one through five, you're going to put that na person's name under that answer option. Now, of course, a dice has six numbers. If you get a six, just re-roll and pick a new number. The next thing you're going to do, or rather this is what it's going to look like, you're going to have your five categories. So I have lime, orange, raspberry, grape, and cherry. If I were setting up my chart, this would be lime would be number one, orange two, raspberry three, grape four, and cherry five. So when I roll the dice, if I get a four, I'm going to put that person's name under grape. If I roll a three, they're going to go under raspberry. So you're going to set up your chart that's on page two to look like this. You'll fill people's names in. Make sure you fill in 
whether the uh, the whole name so that you can record whether this is a boy or a girl later on. And then when you get done, you tally them up at the bottom like I did here with a 7, a 5, a 4, a 2, and a 2. You need to have a total of 20 names on there before you are done with this part. Go for it.